welcome to the Awakening Podcast. You can find all our episodes on awakeningpodcast.org. We're also on BitChute as Awakening Podcast. We also have four other podcasts. You'll have to check them out. You'll find them on rycom.com. Today, my guest, basically, he was recommended by a previous guest, P- Peter Stone, and I checked out his stuff. So please welcome Peter Wilson. Hello, and thank you for having me on. It's great to meet, every, meet you and everybody else on your uh, podcast. So I know your ex-Royal uh, Navy, you've had your own martial arts uh, for 30 years. There's obviously a story about that. I know you've kind of similar what's happened to you, but perhaps you might like to let people know who you are and your journey. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I was definitely in the, the Royal Navy, which um, I joined straight from school at the age of 16. Um, straight down to uh, Plymouth, uh, and then from Plymouth straight over the river into uh, Cornwall at uh, HMS Rally. I'm not really sure if you can even join the Navy nowadays, all the forces at all until you're 18. But you know, I went down at uh, 16 year old, 16 years old, um, you know, and then spent five years in the Royal Navy, traveling all over the world. Um, you know, and ended up uh, I was an armorer uh, and a gunner. Um, and we, you know, we ended up doing a lot of uh, work for the Fisher Protection Squadron, which I don't even think exists now. But that was around the British Isles when we were inspecting uh, and monitoring all the fishing boats, which we at the time had giant fishing fleets based all around the uh, the fishing towns in the UK, plus all of the the fishing vessels that came over from abroad and everything, even giant um, Russian super trawlers that would just (laughs) scoop up like the whole sea as they were passing by. I've heard Um, they destroy the ecosystem because they basically take the whole lot. Everything goes in and nothing comes back out. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they even had all the tinning uh, facilities on the, the trawlers, these giant things, you know, um, and, and it was, yeah, they just took everything, <laughs> you know, crazy, crazy places they were. Um, yeah, uh, but left and spent some time living, living in Spain. Um, and then when we came back to the UK, you know, I've all, I, I, I was boxing when I was in the Royal Navy. I was boxing when I was a kid. Um, continued um, all the time in boxing, moving into martial arts and kickboxing, became a professional fighter as well, running my own, like I say, martial arts centre for 30 years now. And I've just, well, still not, but like in two weeks' time, I will be handing the reins over to my son so he can, you know, run it. He's got his own already anyway, so now he's going to take over mine and give me a little bit of time off so I can relax a bit and do my own thing as well as, you know, continue with the study of the law and uh, everything, because it takes up a lot of time, you know, not only studying it, but helping other people with their issues, shall we call them, um, you know, and everything like that. So that that's brings us, I know, very, very quickly over the last sort of like 50 years, but there we are. So how did you get into the, let's, we won't say it, it's, I mean, whether it's UCC, sovereignty, or just understanding your rights, whatever the terminology, because there's so many different people saying different things. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, you know, I think, and um, you know, when you get people that um, that uh, are looking at things and you could call them, you know, like the, the odd one out or something like that, you know, I've always felt different to everybody else. I've never, ever sort of like... Um, Uh, fitted in anywhere you know I mean I always had friends and everything but um, I always felt as if I was the odd one out always and always seen seen things differently to everybody else Um, and could never quite understand what we were doing here and what what was the whole purpose of being here you know and for quite a long time and this is strange and I've actually spoke to I don't know what you would call them to other people about it saying like what do you think of this and I can remember for a long time actually as if I was outside of my body and I was watching myself, you know, and things, even the really bad things that were happening to me, I was like, that doesn't really matter because it's not me anyway. I'm just watching him, (laughs) you know, but I tried, and I've always been like um, interested in the law. I did study law when I was younger as well. And I've gone back into studying it again now. And I'm talking about 
their version of the law, let's say that, <laughs> where you would get like, you know, your master's degree or whatever it was that you wanted to do. And, and you know, so and I was studying the law, contract law and the law of tort. And um, that was like the, my main thing uh, and the most enjoyable, which I've gone back to study properly now so that I didn't never get the qualification, but I might actually try and get it now, but not to become a lawyer. I'm not going to go and be, be a solicitor or go on the other side, if you want to call it that. Um, mainly is where I don't, I don't want I wouldn't want to be on their side, but I mean, it costs like 50 grand a year, you know, to get your practicing license. And that's what they call it, a practice and license. So you can only practice it. You can never really do it. But it's £50,000, that is, a year, just to, to be able to um, say that you can give legal advice. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. So, you know, you never say that. Say, do you want legal advice? I'm not, I, can't, I can't give you any. It cost me fifty grand just to get the license to say that. Um, but, you know, like going through the years of, uh, like when I stopped fighting professionally, um, and, you know, I had quite a good successful career at that, you know, it was like live on Sky Sports. Um, but when we stopped, we really went into teaching and running um, academies, if you want to call them that. And we were very successful at that as well. And, and through that, we actually built up um, a property portfolio. So we were in the property business as well, renting out properties. We had properties all over England as well as, um, you know, uh, in the United States. We spent some time in the United States because we were doing a lot of um, training ourselves, not on the martial arts side only, but in the martial arts business side as well. So like learning how to run um, a full time business uh, in the health industry. Um, so we developed like quite a large portfolio uh, and, you know, I didn't really sort of like pay too much attention to um, how much money was involved and in, i.e., borrowing and mortgages and things like that you know i just let it happen um but it, you know then the crash happened like in 2007 to well it was yeah seven and eight but seven was when it really sort of like destroyed me we lost over a million pounds worth of property in a week um you know including our own home and ended up with literally nothing um you know and when when I was looking at that and, and looking at sort of like, well, look, you know, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I've followed all the rules. I've, uh, you know, I've done it what they told me to do. I haven't done anything wrong. So how comes I can be in this position? And my only conclusion was, well, you know, because it's done on purpose. They've, they've set this up so that they can now reclaim things and then they're going to sell it all again. And, you know, um, and so I started like investigating other things and not 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 just homelessness but like people losing their properties losing homes to find you know horrific stories and horrific scenes of people being dragged out of their own homes since that crash you know and getting dragged out by police as well and you think you know this is supposed to be um, a civil case a civil problem or a civil argument on payment on finance between a bank and a person so uh, you know and i say person on purpose um so why are the police getting involved no one's committed a crime well they have but it was certainly wasn't the one that was getting dragged out of the home you know so it it made me like deep dive into the financial scam if you want to call it and it is yeah. and the scandal um you know and from there you just get deeper and deeper into it and then you end up going down one lane or a rabbit hole if you want to call it that and then think oh right discovering a lot of information and from there you know it leads on and leads on um so really that's my main concern is all along still in the law but in contract law um and, and in the acts and statutes where we can use acts and statutes that benefit man rather than the opposite way, um, where sometimes where, you know, like if you know the, the term of the person, um, it can be of a benefit now and again. So although it is a government creation, which we can discuss uh, how that came about and what it actually means, but, you know, it's not all bad. So, you know, you, you, you um, a lot of people say, oh, I want to be sovereign and like get out of the system um and you know but in reality you know if you're getting out of the entire system what are you going to do i mean 
Do you want to go and live in a field, right? Live up a tree and eat grass, you know? I mean, that, that that's out the system in reality, you know? Or you're a, you know, you're, you're a multimillionaire and you can go and buy your own island and live on that and do whatever you want. But that's not really where <laughs> most people are. Um, so, you know, it the way that I've actually worked um, over the last two to three years has been like, well, all right, how do we use their system to benefit us and be able to fight them back properly? Because now and again, we want to be lawful, um, but it can benefit you sometimes to take on that title of being a person, right? Rather than being a man, a man is in law, a person is in legal, okay? So there's a huge difference between legal and lawful and not many people can understand that. But then again, right, you don't always want to be saying, oh, no, I the man and I'm in law and don't do legal. Because if you can use legal in the right way at the right time, it can massively benefit you as a man. Because we are, again, we're still, we, we are the, the living man, you know. But now and again, let them give you or at least accept the title for a time uh, as the person or the mister, all right, and use that legal uh, or act in statute where it protects you, where it actually does state it's to be protected against the corporation or against the um, creditor, if you want to call it that. Just you know? on that, because I actually went through something very similar. It took a bit later to come across the seas, but went through losing everything, which in turn has made, given me energy to kind of fight this, fight the corruption, because You've had, you know, I, obviously you're a fighter, you're tough, but you know that there's a lot of people that have thrown in the towel because of the corruption. I saw the amount of uh, evictions in Ireland. So I lost everything. I lost my own home as well. I had three houses in Ireland. They took my personal belongings and I started fighting the court because when you lose everything, you don't have the money. And I started representing myself and I saw so much corruption. Like in Ireland, I don't know what way it is in the UK, but in Ireland, there's like, a hundred cases and one judge and they're just and most of them are just the, the barristers which are very expensive just saying the thing and the judges yeah yeah rule in favor of the bank plus interest plus costs and there was so many cases that i was listening to like somebody he had said uh, we got kpmg to actually check and we were overcharged interest and the judge said when was that or oh, three years ago you should have took it up with them then bang rule in favor of the judge there was women gone crying. My husband died of cancer. I don't know what to do. Oh, I'm so sorry. Nothing to do with me. Bang, rule in favor. And, and then I met people because of the fight. And I found out that with the portfolio, they had actually sold the properties to vulture funds. So every single thing and all the houses that they've repossessed, which I have found out later, was all done illegally. And as you mentioned, the way they send the police in, which shouldn't be doing that. So they didn't even have the proper court orders to do that. And people have lost, like, not only are people losing their homes, but they're losing the relationships because the stress involved in not yeah. having the home, especially if there's children involved, it is so hard when there's children involved. Yeah, well, this is the whole thing right now. You gotta, you gotta remember now. Like, I've, I've sort of like gone into. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna go down the line and I'll explain what I've discovered and what I believe and what I can see, and it, and everything like this backs it up. The last two years, right? Um, what have they done? They, they, they've, and what for? Now, I'm not being funny, right? But like, they've went through. I have seen like. Um, like police women and men, right? Hanging through the windows of people's homes, right? Screaming and shouting, they're going to arrest them and fine them two and 300 pounds because they reported someone was in having a cup of coffee. All right, you weren't allowed to mix. I mean, do you think there's anybody ever think that some like idiot in a, in a uniform hanging in your front room window? Do you think that's normal behavior? Right. I've seen them smashing down the doors of men and women. Right. And barging in there because someone had rang up and said they, were, they had company. And they didn't even have company. So really, like, you know, you just have to ring up the police now and say, oh, they've got all, you know, they've got had someone in the house for coffee. And, you know, I haven't got anybody in my house. So I'm doing my thing. Right. And avoiding all this. I don't want to say the words or anything. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, you know, and it, it's just insanity. How can anyone say that that is normal behavior? 
unfortunately, I even know someone who who um, they did actually have someone in for a coffee. They'd been on their own for a, over a year. Someone went in for a coffee to try and cheer this woman up, right? Someone reported her, so the police visited, gave her an on-the-spot fine, which is completely and utterly illegal, right? And when I say the word illegal, so f- forget the law, right? Just use their term. It was illegal. They're not allowed to do it. And you can just, like, pass that back. Right. But this woman like got really upset. Then her husband come home. Right. Got really angry, went round to the neighbor who reported them, got into an argument, hit them. They fell over and banged their head and died. Now he's in prison for life. You know, so it has massive other repercussions, not just this, you know, the, the immediate effect of like, you know, the fine or anything like that. Um, and this is just all about keeping the people's mood and aspirations low and keeping the fear high now look at it now that literally they've just kind of like pressed a switch on the wall like you'd switch the light off all oh, right let's go and switch that off now the last two years and forget about it and they literally have just what they don't even mention they're not a single thing is being mentioned anywhere it's like stop right now let's talk about this now they're talking about a war right it's like literally swapped and the same people that were being ridiculous about like the first thing are now being ridiculous about the war. We're seeing people that have got big beards and they're painted it the same color flag as the Ukraine. So what, what are you doing? You know, and it's like they've swallowed a different narrative to the one that they were being told for two years. Uh, but it's all about fear, though. It's all about like keep in the schools where we live anyway, in the northeast of England, right? They have pamphlets passing out to children talking about this war. Why? Why are they doing that? Now they're explaining, you know, this great like beast of called Putin, who's going to a demon and he's going to do all this and kill the world and everything like that. But, you know, we invaded Iraq, right? When I say we, I mean like, you know, the the British and the American governments, not me, right? And they went and killed thousands upon thousands of innocent people. They didn't tell the school children about that. No. Right, all about three hundred and fifty or three hundred and seventy thousand Yemeni people have died in the last ten years, right, at the hands of the Saudis. But like, where was the outrage for that? Right, ten thousand of them are roughly were children. So why aren't everyone screaming about that? It, it's it's just like ridiculous, you know. But it's just whatever narrative is put up by like that lame stream media, you know, and and it's just all created like what. Well, just about fear. Just keep everybody low, right? Keep the vibration down. We don't want anybody lifting up the vibration because they're going to change the collective and raise it up, which is what we try and do, um, you know. Uh, and it's just insanity. The whole thing. It's just like what C- we call CNN, the hologram. CNN and Sky yeah. News and a few others. I've seen because I mean I'm subscribed to a few different things. I've got uh, my own circle that you know they make sure you get the right stuff because it's you know it's a minefield out there. But there was so many pictures that they were using that weren't even from the Ukraine showing buildings bombed and everything. Yeah. And then everybody is regurgitating that. And I'm not saying there's not stuff terrible because I you know I'm close to it here. I know that there's it's the innocent person that is being displaced and there is some terrible things going on but oh, yeah. it's all a lie i mean like i'm even saying it to people like the world economic forum with uh, klaus schwab like he's even said about not only canada that he controls that but i mean that he's got putin was one of his little puppies and he like the U- ukrainian uh, leader is actually on the world economic forum they're just pulling the strings and it, it, it's the people on the ground and it's all fair and people are just regurgitating it and they don't realize it's a game and we're all the pawns inside it. Yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is like with, with remember the film, the, uh, the Godfather. And I think on the book, uh, the Godfather, they showed like the hand pulling the strings of like the politicians and everything like that. And it was what they were saying is obviously it was like the Godfather, the gangster who was, playing the uh politicians but like these ones are gangsters far bigger you know like uh, klaus schwab we've just said and they are playing these puppets and then the puppets do whatever they're told to do and then it is the innocents that always get hurt and i'm not ever trying to say that the, you know there isn't people that are getting killed and uh, you know i know it is terrible um and what's happening to the people but it is it's it's the people us that end up getting the 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 bad end of the stick well you know they don't care 
nothing nothing's ever real real um they just decide that there will be like a war and and that's it and it's just all to create fear keep everybody low and to raise their finances or their their riches you know they certainly you know they're not gonna ever suffer or have a shortage of like finance or anything other it's you know it doesn't even exist money is completely and utterly fake you know this fiat currency is just, they just make it out of thin air which is one of the things that we try and help people understand and they're all scared of the lack of money and so it doesn't even exist anyway what are you talking about you know um but what you said there before as well about like the the barristers and the judges and the the actual um the lies, what they do, and they just go through, and and literally the corruption is is just ridiculous, you know. Um, and it's all about everything, everything. If you try and think about it, we call it the dead earth hologram. It's just a complete and utter game that we're in. We are in a computer game, and nothing is real. Um, and, and until we get more people to wake up to that fact, you know, and that everything is controlled for reasons we're never going to improve it. We've got to wake more people up to like, oh, hang on, stop and get off, get off that hamster wheel. And, and the hamster wheel is the game that they've got us in. You know, it isn't like, and they call it themselves, don't they? We've got to get off the rat race. Yeah, get off it. Stop playing their game, which is the rat race, you know? And that this, the, the, the fraud uh, and everything is just forgery and fraud. It's ridiculous. And you just got to try and get more and more people like aware of it. You know, oh, absolutely. and it, it's maybe an angle that I'd like to go down because like there's so many people, especially with the like COVID with all the crap that's happened with that. And and the reason I'm not afraid to say it because I, I'm not on YouTube. So I know that I mean. <laughs> <laughs> bit, bit you thankfully will be OK with this. Song. But like with with the bailout, because be, everyone then is owed money and then they get the bailout. When I went through this property, so I saw how bad the bailiffs are. And I thought it was poem, but I've recently seen it's all over the world. There was one set of properties. They bribed everyone in the room and they basically took the properties at a very low price. Another one, they put up a screenshot. So it's up for a second, yet they've got proof of it. So nobody actually knows about it. Nobody turns up for the actual auction. So in reality, they're supposed to get to the best price, pay off the debt. And if there's excess, you get that, but they don't want that. And I've had valuers working in cahoots with the bailiffs and a, a property that was, if we talk, say, in euro terms, it was worth over a million. And they, they nobody turned up for the first one because the way they'd done it. And then the, the valuer basically destroyed the property, saying that, oh, it's a terrible building. That, that. So he valued it at more, less than half. So it meant that the second value would have been at a quarter of the price which was no it was actually worth more and it was only that somebody else came in and bought it i mean i got not out of it but i wasn't personally liable but i just saw they're doing that to everybody and what's happening is people then are personally liable for the different there is so much corruption with like the whole lot of them should be swinging from the tree they're all involved in it yeah, absolutely. And it is like you got to think just on, on the property side, right? You got to remember, right? That the thing is, when you, when these people are going in and uh, they're getting themselves a property uh, so they, or, or a home or whatever it is, so they're going to get a mortgage. So you go in and you apply for the mortgage and you're going to provide them with your signature, all right? Your sign of nature. This is what creates the credit. OK, you create the credit. You have not borrowed one penny from anybody. Right. So when you go into the bank, it's a mortgage or a lo or, or a bank loan or anything like that. But definitely for the for like, well, let's stick with the mortgage. So you actually sign that document. You are creating a promissory note. All right. So let's just say it's for 200,000, 250,000. You've just created 250,000 pounds. Right. You created it by doing that. That is a promissory note. You also sign at the time, which you don't realize the power of attorney to them. You've given them your power of attorney. The power of attorney is for them to be able to then sell that promissory note on the uh, securities exchange. So what happens is you create that promissory note. They deposit it into their bank account. Banks have no money. Banks do not have money in it. All right. So what happens is they deposit that promissory note into their account, then transfer it to you the next day and tell you we've given you that money. But you actually 
give them a promissory note which created that credit and then they deposited it into your account. Then it's called securitization. They securitize it by selling that uh, on the fractional banking reserve, which they're allowed to do under the uh, Rothschild scheme, right? Up to nine times, right? But we know they do way more than nine times. So literally you've got like 200,000, they, they can sell it for nine times, right? So uh, 200,000 to other people as, as bonds, security bonds. But when Lehman's went bust, and that was in 2007, wasn't it? 2007 and eight, that big crash I was talking about. And they had securitized their loans 48, 49 times, which is why they collapsed so quick. You know, they just like had, they had like 49 minus <laughs> times of what they were supposed to have. Um, so then on the, the actual mortgage, right? What do they ask you for, right? They ask you for a repayment not a payment, a repayment, because you've already paid it. You can only redo something that you've already done. So there is the great swindle of the whole thing that, you know, the mortgage itself is the biggest swindle, the biggest scam you could ever see. And then what they do is be, that with this power of attorney, they then create a charge on the land registry so that the, the first in time, first in line, they are in front of you in the queue on the land registry. So if anything, that's how they get the property, okay? So they actually own it before you own it. Their share is, is greater than your, yours. You, their charge is greater than yours. So, you know, one big thing that we are doing at the moment is we're actually, we have um, a, a mortgage uh, lien, which is uh, challenging the, the actual banks. All right, now we this is a list of questions we want you to ask, uh, answer. Right. Like, show us the audited accounts of where that money came from. Show us that it, you had it in your account before we came in. Right. And obviously they can't do that. Show us the original deed with the wet ink signature. Well, they can't do that because they've sold it. Right. So we challenge them on all these points. OK. Um, a, a, a great one that you can do is, was Michael Obanissia. I don't know if you've heard of him before, but he made a film, I think, about the mortgage swindle, something like the great. British mortgage, whatever it was, but it's about mortgages. And, um, you know, he, he, his family lost their homes and properties and everything, but he, he won his case. He got it all back uh, by doing this lean or, uh, you know, so he, he's been very good at it and successful at it. We do the same all the time with um, unsecured debt. I help people just get rid of any unsecured debt because it's all fake. All right. Um, but, on the mortgage thing you can actually challenge them now once you've got the affidavits put in and they can't answer them they won't answer them because they would literally have to admit fraud which they're not going to do right so then you with that all of that evidence we can then place that evidence to the land registry and say look they cannot prove this so we want that charge removed now, if you can get that charge removed by doing all the paperwork correctly and putting that to the actual land registry, then you can close down your mortgage because you get rid of them on the land registry. Once they're off the land registry, they've got no chance of ever taking you home. And you should also be creating a private trust and putting all of your property, if it's got a mortgage on or not, it doesn't matter, put it into a private trust as well. Because you know these people that did lose the home, if they had put their interest in the property, in a private trust, as well as the equity that they had, i.e. the mortgage minus the uh, value of the house, right, then they would have never had their houses taken off them. Because this is like, you know, the, the, the Rockefellers tell you it point blank, you know, own nothing, control everything. It's the trusts. Everything gets put in a trust. And once it's in a trust, nobody can touch it. So, you know, and this is like the, the, the kind of like education that we're trying to give to people is like, you know, like find out about all these things. We'll help you find out about them so you can start fighting these people back, you know, because the, the corruption that they have is just absolutely crazily disgusting, you know. So we just want to help as many people as possible to be able to fight against this corrupt system. It's not booking the system. You know, I'm not saying I'm anti government or anti anything because like i say i, I want to use some of the acts and statutes in our favor right that the government have created uh, the gdpr and the dpa are fantastic 
I often think they did it by mistake. You know, like the, 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 the general data protection, protecting your data. You don't know how powerful that is. The, um, the Data Protection Act as well. The, all of these um, bailiffs you just mentioned there, right? And they turn up at your door. They're not even allowed to be there. They shouldn't have your data. They've broken all these, let's call them laws. They're not laws, but they're, they're acts and statutes, right? But they've broken them all. So we just hit them straight with that. You know, these debt collection agencies start giving all these poor people all this grief and everything. We just go list all of the ones that they've broken, hand it to them and say, right, what are you going to do about that? And they'll say, oh, well, we're going to hand it back to the original creditor. That's what they say in the letters, you know, when we challenge them and say, well, why have you got our, you know, not like just if I was talking like on as the, 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 the debtor themselves, why have you got our data? What are you doing with it? And who gave you it? They're like, um, oh, well, you know, the Property Act uh, 1925 allows us to. No, it doesn't. Under Section 136, Part 1, you have to have a very specific and special reason to have that. And if you haven't got it, then you shouldn't be talking to me. Oh, yeah, but, you know, you're not allowed to know that. You know, we've been got an assignment. We've been assigned the debt. Well, if you've been assigned the debt, I should have had a notice of assignment signed by you and by them and by me. And it should have been delivered to me on recorded delivery. And it has to be recorded delivery, and I have to sign for that. So where was it? Oh, no, well, we've got it. No, you bloody haven't, right? So the proof of the thing is, right, that we always do it, and we, when we write them, we do the conditional acceptance, okay? And you always put on there, we promise to pay, exactly like it says on the notes, which are just promissory notes, no value in them £10 notes or anything. We promise to pay, it, it states it on there. We put that in the permit. Um, the actual conditional acceptance. We promise to pay when you prove we owe it, right? So, you know, and, and that's it. And then also when they always write the letters, they always put it to you owe 10,000 pounds. And we write back and say, okay, well explain who you is then, because I don't know you. And if you can tell me who you is, then I will redirect it to you. <laughs> and it's the fact. You know, so it's, but that's what they always do because you is plural because they know the scam and they're trying to trick you with their, their word magic and the legalese. And you think that they're speaking English and they're actually speaking nonsense and you, you fall for it and you give them joinder by accepting the talking to the living person or the living man when it, they say you. They want, it's literally fishing and they want someone to grab the bait, you know? So they throw you out and you grab a hold of you. So then everyone gets confused. <laughs> and with with the, the leakers, I mean, I've looked at a lot of things on this and uh, like Black Law's Dictionary, because uh, I see a lot of it kind of comes back to that. I don't know, is that something that you've been studying yourself? But what, what I find frustrating, I suppose, at times is you've got... Some people refer to uh, uh, edition four, then five, yeah. then seven. And then some are saying, go with the latest one It's because it's more modern. And others are saying they've taken out stuff. What's your thoughts on that one? Yeah, well, 100 percent. I mean, if if there was like um, I use Bouvier's dictionary quite a lot. All right. Rather than Black Laws, because Bouvier's is just the original one. So if they had set the, the original like Black Laws Dictionary, they should have just done version one. That should be it, Black Laws Dictionary. There shouldn't be, well, I've got it now. I think the last one was version 11, 11th edition. Yeah. So like, well, well, why did they have to change it 11 times? You know, whereas in, in, in reality, if you look, I can't, can't remember the date now, but it was something like 1864. They changed the definition in Black Law, the definition of a person. All right. So they changed the definition to mean a corporation because this was the creation of the, uh, the, the, the person. Right. Which you think is you. Right. But it's not I'm going back to you again. Going to confuse everyone. The um, as the man being the person and it's not it's a corporation. So on the um, really, if we look at the push of the fiction, the legal fiction, which is where the, the person comes from, which is where all of the, the, the debts are tied to the person, not the man or the woman. Um, it was in the 1930s when they really started pushing for this birth certificate thing. So that what they did is they offered compelled benefits to uh, parents of 
um, ch child maintenance, not main. What do you call it? Child benefit yeah. or um, welfare, yeah, maternity yeah. leave, maternity leave, paid maternity leave. You know, from work. If you filled in and registered your child in the birth certificate, okay. Whereas before, you used to just get put in a, either your family bible or a church uh, book. You know, the bible or the child was born, they would put it in the church bible. But what they were doing when well, they were moving it to the, the registration of, of uh, a child, which was instead, of, you know, that's that that is a title in itself. So your son or your daughter now became a child. And then you, right, you you became not a mother or a father, you become a parent. These are all titles of a person. So it's and the compelled benefit. Once you've accepted the benefit, then you are the person. So, you know, that's, and it's literally everything is compelled benefits to make you join in this legalese, this legal system. So you become part of the legal society under the bar. OK, the British account uh, accredited registration, which is the city of London, the temple bar in that 1.2 miles, whatever it is, square mile that is guarded by the the um, the demons. Right. Well, the, the 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 dragons with the I think that's got a, a silver silver teeth and red tongue or something like that, all pointing out to keep you know um, them in. It's it's like they've got like their 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 demons inside there. That's what it's all run from the um, this the city of London, tied in with the Vatican. You know, like the Temple Bar, which is the uh, original home of the Knights Templar which is in the very centre of the city of London. I'm talking about, you know what I mean, don't you? The city, not London. Yeah, but right? and just for those that might know, there's actually different places as well. They don't have the black and white. They have the red and white in that mile square or square mile or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, because it is, it's its own country. It's its own state. It is not the United Kingdom. It is outside of their jurisdiction completely. So they have their own police force because they're a different country um now the, the it's the the city of london uh it's been i'm just actually writing uh on the board there um the the it's been run as the roman empire you know for for thousands of years we've been under civil law which is roman civilly law um but you know what i was saying is that that temple the original temple bar that is the only like bit of land if you want to call it land like on earth that is higher in statute than the or st uh, status than than the vatican because you have your three centers that you'll know of the vatican uh the city of london and uh washington dc which again washington dc is itself is not part of the united states of america or or, or america it's actually its own state washington dc and the Vatican, again, is, is its own state. It's not part of Italy. Um, you know, it's not part of Rome. It's it's actually the Vatican itself. So it's, and that's the three centers of what we're actually talking about, who control the, the world. This is, and that is the Roman Empire or the Holy Roman Empire as they made it again. You know, Constantine, the the, um, the, the Roman Empire, the one who become the Christian and developed the, the Holy Roman Empire instead of the Roman Empire, um, and then th it was kind of extinguished the holy part uh, right up after 410 AD, I think um, it stopped being the Holy Roman Empire and Constantine started to pull all of the people back. Um, and then it, it, it was literally recreated again, right, on the 25th of December, 800 by Pope Leo III when he awarded uh, the emperor, uh, he literally created the Holy Roman Emperor again by gave, giving it to Charlemagne. You heard the name Charlemagne? So like he was the, he was the, the again, became the, 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 the emperor of um, the Holy Roman Empire. Um, and all of the popes have all been meddling, you know, like in all of the world, all of the time to, to, to keep us like you know, in this dead earth hologram, um, you know, and everything that we've actually seen. Now, I tell you, I can't remember his name now, but who the, it's always been uh, the, the popes that have been putting these papal bulls together to um, have people invaded and killed. And like, you know, whereas like in 1066, um, 
the the uh, it's actually on the the bayou tapestry and you can see like uh william the conqueror he was led into battle they thought they were all the soldiers themselves they thought that they were on um uh um the a religious crusade right so they would thought well if i get killed in battle i'm going straight to heaven and they had the uh, the pope's flag and they had the pope's seal to actually invade england because they wanted to take the city of london back because harold was not the bloodline harold godwinson was not the bloodline they had voted him in by the wiccan you know he was a saxon he wasn't uh, um because they were all french before that yeah i sorry they were they were all um like coming from a, a, a latin background all, all from rome you know um, and and if you look back going uh, uh, like all, all the way back to the, the the original part which was in when it was invaded or, or conquered I should say in 43 AD they were after Rome and uh, so they were after London right they wanted to go to that specific point why didn't they do it like why didn't they make right if they landed the Romans they landed um, in well Along the Dover coast, there was about three places, but Dover was one, then there was a little bit that way and a little bit that way. So why didn't they go and create their capital city there, where they landed? Straight across the Straits of Dover is what's called now, right? Uh, that's the shortest point where they go swim in the channel, isn't it? The, um, you know, you would think that they, that's where you would land and then you would create your, uh, your capital. Why did they march all the way in, you know, to get to that, because, it, it, you know, to get to the, the city of London? It's because they wanted that on the ley lines. They wanted it on the point. The same as Washington, D.C. and the Vatican. And it's all instigated and run um, by Venice. Okay, the Venetians themselves, which is like the black bloodline, the black nobility. I know this is going way off anything to do with, uh, what do you call it, law? But it is, it's just, this is the legal society. You know, the actual legal society is, is, is run by these people. And this is where it's all led by the bar, right? The British accredited registry, even in, in any country that, that um, you know, you, you hear about them, they've passed the bar to become a barrister, right? It means that they're British. They've accepted, um, uh, um, they are, um, I'm trying to think of the word, because they get a title which like in America, you're not allowed to have a, title, a British title or a foreign title under their constitution, right? But, um, you know, they actually get, if they pass the bar, then they have to be British because they're part of the British accredited registry. Any barrister or anyone says that they pass the bar in any country, that's exactly what they're doing, you know? So um, that's treason, <laughs> by the way, in the United States, just for anybody listening just in case so you know what uh, what's going on there but it's all tied together so it's like you know and you just don't, if you look at how big that is right from that little temple bar which is tiny the inns they call them the inns which is where all of the the, the temple bar and it, there's, there's like the inner temple going like and they're surrounded by these inns where they, they used to go and actually have to pass the bar to become a barrister or a lawyer, whichever one you want to call it, but is a barrister inside these inns in that little bit of uh, the, the city of London. It's um, very intriguing stuff. And like, I suppose we, because we've been there, right? We know what it's like when everything kind of caves in and you're watching the penny. It does no pennies coming, basically. Like, First of all, I suppose the signature, because I like I, I've read a lot of books on this, and everyone's got their own kind of angle. So, what's your take on how we should be signing her name? Ah, right. Okay. Well, if you, well, you should be giving people your autograph rather than your signature or your sign of nature. Okay, because when you're going into banks or going into any kind, remember, which is that we, we live under Roman civil law, and that's contracts. Everything is a contract. Your entire life is a contract. Uh, and if it's not a contract that, that, that on your behalf, it's, it's um, a contract on their behalf, and you're under a bad contract, mostly. Um, you know, the way to sign it, like if, if you wanted to do it, an autograph, now, everybody is different. You're totally right. And I always do my 
autograph just in lower case. I don't use colons. I don't use semicolons. And I've asked them all of the top sort of like, you know, these people that, that, that sign it in these different ways. Well, why do you sign it like that? And they went, because it is in the Oxford Styles Guide or the Chicago Styles Guide. And it says that the compact fact comes from the colon and the hyphen. So I've went through all of the Oxford Styles Manual and the Oxford Guide to Style, and it's all about how to write. Um, and the Chicago one as well. And I've got like several, uh, I've got the, like, again, they've got loads of different editions, you know, so they might be talking about a different edition, you know, but definitely in the, uh, I've got the 14th and the 17th of the, the Chicago one and the very recent Oxford one. And um, a lot of people do use these colons and everything for signatures, but when I do, I just use lowercase. And I do not use the surname because the surname does not belong to us. The surname is the creation of the corporation. So I just use my first name and all lowercase. But everybody's different and I would never tell anybody what to do. You can all do what you want. But, you know, like I I went through it and studied it. And and what they were telling me is like on, on the Oxford style, like, oh, yeah, I've got it out of there. And it said how to do it. Well, I've read it from book. You know, and it tells you all about names. It tells you all about punctuation. Tells you all about being capitalized. Um, and nowhere in there, in any version, does it say to use um, a colon before a signature. You know, and that, that that will make you a living man. But it does say, and you can use like all lowercase. And once you stick to it, and once you've done it, stick to it, and don't change it, and that creates you as a man or a woman, but you know, the capital, right? The capitalized name, you've got three different versions of it and all of them mean a corporation, which we were talking about created by the birth certificate. So you've got cap- capitus maximus, capitus medius and capitus minimus. So on the maximus, you'll get that when you get your tax bill, you'll get that when you get your council tax bill or your, your, your rates bill, whatever it is, and it'll have your name. So for instance, for me, it would be Peter Wilson, all capitals. That's capitus maximus. So they're definitely talking to your corporation. But then they try and trick you to try and get you to give joinder. So you might think, no, that's not me. Right. So what they do is they'll say, put a capital P for Peter and then Wilson will be all capitals. And that's your, your capitalist media. So they've only done it to a medium level. And then to really confuse you, they do it on a minimus, which is a capital P for Peter and a capital W for Wilson. But it's still the title of the corporation. So that's how they try and disguise it and they send you these different, where well, they call it a bill, but it's not a bill. It can only be a statement or an offer because a bill according to the Bills of Exchange Act 1882, which covers all of the um, Commonwealth, by the way. So, you know, it's exactly this. There might be a slightly different version, but it all comes from that 1882, the Bills of Exchange Act. It must have um, written down. So if I want to charge you £100, I must write down £100. I kind of put like the, 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 like a number one and double zero, that doesn't mean anything. It has to be, by the bills of exchange, a written sum certain. That's what they explain it, a written sum certain. Um, So you have to have it on £100, written like that, and it must be signed with a wet ink signature by whoever it is that's creating a bill. And it must have the word bill written on. So when we do notices to people as a man, right, and we do it to people in their private capacity, we send them a bill for any wrong or trespass that they may have done to us. And we send them a bill and it's titled bill. And we have a sum certain written on 1,000 pounds, please. You know, and then you write 1,000 underneath. And then it gets to make sure that it has a signature on. That is a bill according to the bills of exchange. Again, that's an act of parliament, but sometimes we have to use those acts and statutes when it's in our favour and when it protects us or helps us. That's why you don't go and live in a field and eat grass or climb up trees to live. You know, you don't jump out of the system. You, you, you go public and private. You've got to be a private man, but you go into the public world to to. Co- conduct commerce 
and then come back and be private again. Okay, so that's you've got to be able to use both sides of the coin, all right? Use their system as well as your, your, your lawful system as well as their legal system. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, of course, yeah. And uh, I, I mean, with the signature, as we mentioned, there's so many different ones. What I've been doing, because sometimes you have to do electronic signatures in um, Poland for collecting the post. You know, they kind of say it's for themselves. But I've just been putting LS, as in for living soul, after the thing. <laughs> you know, it, like it's, at the end of the day, if it goes to court, you can say, I put down that it's, that's my kind, I, I could, be, could be the most bonkers thing ever. But, you know, I think you have to try to do something that not in their system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And always, if, like, you know, whenever, if, if you get asked to, to, um, to sign anything, all right, you can always put all rights reserved. You know, so if you, oh, I have to sign something, they're going to make you sign it, put all rights reserved or the dot C which is, uh, stands for, on Latin, V coactus, which is similar. It means under duress. So, you know, you cannot be held accountable for that signature. So if you've signed for something by the uh, guard or the police or whatever, then, then you put V.C or all rights reserved. It protects your rights. And what about without prejudice as well? Then there's other ones you write without prejudice. Yeah. And if you look, if you've ever had any kind of uh, notices or letters or anything like that sent by by solicitors or, or legal firms or whatever they want to call themselves, they always have that written on without prejudice. So uh, especially on a negotiation side. So if you're in a, ne a negotiation for something and you should you should always write without prejudice, because then if you're making an offer to somebody and they, they're going to come back with a counter offer and then they change their mind. Right. If you haven't put like, you know, like uh, without prejudice on, then they can hold you to the original one. But if you've got without prejudice, then they cannot hold it up in court, say, for instance, or then go back to it or say, well, but you stated this because if you've got without prejudice written on, it cannot be held against you. Like when people are getting like, because I'm trying, I know there's a million different angles we can go on this and I'm totally enjoying the, the conversation. So one thing is that I'd like to actually get you back anyway, and we can go down different angles, but with say, if, if, if I'm looking at the amount of people that are in trouble, because I remember even when I was in the bailiff's office, I remember at one stage, the post, this is just one of them. The postman was coming out with big, huge boxes full about four times. And my thoughts were, there must be over a million people in Poland that are dealing with this. And most people, because of the shame factor, they say nothing. But there is lots of people having to deal with corruption and debt. So when they get the letter, like what kind of tips can you give them? I mean, like this, uh, the, uh, is it fracking, franking, where the, it's not even a stamp? Is yeah. that something that you look, because I just want to take, maybe look at one thing of that, because some people uh, won't be able to actually financially be able to hire somebody to do it. I'm just thinking if someone is on their knees, so what things that, so if we could look at a letter coming in from a, a bailiff. So the first thing is if it's on the window and maybe the franking, just to give them a, you know, a few mm -hmm. things that they can respond. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I Again, there's different people have got different sort of like ideas um, about that, you know, because we know, right, that what they do is they, they're going to put your straw man name, let's call it that, or your legal fiction, right? This is your capitalized name or Mr., which is the title, which is what they give you, all right? Mr. P. Wilson, for instance, with a capital P and a capital W, it's still your legal fiction. It's not you. Right, it's it's your legal fiction that they've created. So it isn't to you on the postal thing. So if you open it, you're actually breaking the law. <laughs> All right, because it's not for you. You can't open other people's mail. So a lot of people do say if it's on the window, right? They're, they're, they're actually making they won't write your name on the envelope because it's fraud. You see, that's why it's inside. So it's literally, it's, it's like, it's, it's just a weird thing, but like, and it's the amount of people that, that 
I've helped to get out of situations. And then they start getting more correspondence that says to the occupier and they still open it. I think, well, what are you doing? It's not to you. Stop it. You know, I can't help it. I'm just so nosy. Look, you know, you just put it in the bin because that's where that type of thing belongs. You do not touch them. But like, you know, a lot of people say um, you put stickers on and I've got them. Um, and depends on what it is. All right. And it's, it says here, I've just got this stickers like that. And it, it says on there, like return to sender, return for cause without dishonor in commerce, no lawful consent, no lawful or legal contract, offer to contract declined. And literally, you know, we've got them on, you can see, you know, we peel them off and stick them on the window. Okay. But if you know that you're dealing with something that needs to be addressed to stop them chasing you, right? Um, so, because the bailiffs have got no legal standing whatsoever. So we should be looking at the GDPR or data protection because, you know, but GDPR covers the whole of the EU. So that's definitely going to cover all of Europe, including like, like Ireland. But the UK is still like under that law. OK, because they redefined it for, for the UK, even though they say they're not part of Europe. Hmm. Right. But this GDPR, the um, General uh, Data Protection Regulations, is very strong in favour of you uh, and also uh, the DPA. So, you know, the um, these acts actually help you uh, to protect yourself against these bailiffs because they shouldn't have your data this is this is the good thing right so what happens is right let's say for instance you've got uh what i'll talk about two things one of them is a debt debt let, let's say a loan right and the other one i'll talk about a bill right so either electric or council tax something like that right so you've got two different things let's talk about um a loan a debt so, you know, we've explained that that's, it's not real, it's fraud, it, it's fake, it's fiction, right? You created the credit, not, not them. They did not give you anything. Um, but let's just say that you've got, I mean, oh my God, the amount of people that are now have just got no money. They, they have not got an income. They, they, they're struggling now after two years of bullshittery, <laughs> you know, and, they're, and they are on the knees, like you just said. Uh, and they can't afford to pay what they thought they would have been able to pay a couple of years ago. So they took a loan out, right? Um, and they haven't been able to pay. So let's just say you've got a credit card as well. And you, have, you're not been, you haven't been able to pay them. After two to three months, what's going to happen is the, the bank that's giving you the loan is a business. And so is the credit card company. And they are a sales team business they've all got targets they've got a monthly target a quarterly target half yearly target and all of that so they look at it every every month and they'll say look you know we, we have to make more profit so they're looking at you and you're not paying right so after two to three months they're going to say we're going to close this account down and they do literally close the account down so in their books they've stopped that loss so that is a profit then they write off that what they class as right um, a bad credit to the tax. So that is a second profit for them. And then they, what they do is they don't right. So if it's yours, you got ten thousand pound loan or credit card, right? They don't just sell that. What they do is they block that in with that. You know, they've got the whole country to say, well, look, let's make a big block of a million million pounds worth of debt. Then we're going to put that block and we're going to sell it on the internet. Uh, and I've seen the websites with my own eyes, right? It's very literally like, like an eBay website for debt. And you've got all these debt companies that go on and they bid on it. So, that, you know, they can get a million quids worth of debt for about like 10, 15 grand, literally. So imagine the profit that they make out of that. So they buy it, but what they don't, they don't buy the debt though. Because the debt is very strict laws on the Laws of Property Act 1925, and it has to be done on a deed of assignment, and it has to be agreed between all the parties, and that would take forever anyway. So they, they, you know, they just close the account down, which means you don't owe anything. By the way, if you think about it logically, they've closed the account. Well, it's dead. Well, I don't owe nothing then, and they sell your data. That is against the law or against their GDPR, DPA. It's illegal in their words, in their life, in their terms. So we dip into the public and we use that. 
All right. So rather than, and I totally understand and the people get the, the window envelope. I use that when I've put it out about helping people. Are you dreading that letterbox drop? They are, aren't they? They're, oh my God, the there's the postman and they hide behind the couch. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I, I've been bankrupt. I, you know, when I lost all that property, I understand it. You know, I, I can, I've lived through it. So I'm not belittling anybody. You know, I, I, we ended up at one stage sleeping and living in a car. Right. So I know what it's like. Um, but so what you do is like, if you know that you have it, you've been able to pay the debt and they've passed it on to a debt collector, debt collectors, anyone who's involved in a debt collection agency, anyone that's like, a, a, like you're a director of it or that you work for them or anything, you are filth, right? You are the lowest of the low scum. I don't care who you are, you're scum. All right. I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah. And the letters that they write are just straight out of filth. And it's like everything is pathetic and you are a pathetic creature. So anyway, they're going to send you a letter. And the first one is normally I've actually I've seen dozens and dozens of them every week now because I help so many people. <laughs> and it's also like, oh, we understand that, you know, the COVID is like being hard, you know, but we're here to help you. Oh, OK. All right. So, uh, you know, what I would do is I would send them straight away what they call. um we call it a DSAR. It means a data subject access request. Now, it might not sound a lot or not sound very powerful, but it's very, very powerful. You are the data subject, you, right? So like you, you haven't paid your loan, you, you, you've been struggling, and now they've sold your data, not the debt, remember, the data. They're not allowed to do that, but they hope you don't know. So the next thing is, right, this um, debt collection agency they get clever as well, by the way, because, you know, people like uh, myself and others are fighting them and, and they try and find the next trick to, like, you know, um, get past us, if you like. So they used to say straight away, well, we've bought your debt. Well, they're dead in the water straight away. So, right, where's the deed of assignment? We need to see that contract. So, uh, uh, and they know they're finished straight away then. Okay. And all you ever have to do is whoever makes a claim has the burden of proof. All right. So we always send them a DSAR as well. It's, it's like you're asking them what data have they got and why have you got it? OK, they have to have. And this is the special words, special or specific reason to have your data. And buying it from Bob the Builder is not a, or Bob the Banker, I should say, is not a special reason or specific reason. Right. There has to be a reason for them to be dealing in your data, data information right is the gold of of this age you know this era all right so that they're dealing in your your information so we send them the dsr right and says like why have you got that you and what you're doing with it you need to stop doing it now so we actually tell them you know that uh, under section 18 of gdpr they have to have special reason or stop using it then we tell them, you know, like under Section 136 of the um, the Law of Property Act 1925, all right, it's part one, that, that um, yeah, unless they've got that deed of assignment, then they shouldn't be talking to us. Now, they're always going to come up now, and the, the lovely thing they always say now is saying, oh, we haven't bought your debt, we're just the agent. We've been told that we can talk to you by Lloyds Bank, all right, um, because you haven't paid your debt. Mm -hmm. Well, that again, it's just, it's ridiculous. So I'll tell you what, show me the reason why you've got my data. Lloyds Bank have got no um, authority to pass that data to you. Where is the signed wetting contract between me and your company, your company of debt collectors or bailiffs or whatever you want to call it, without a contract? And we are in a world of contract. We are all working in commerce. You have no right to talk to me. So go do one. But obviously in a lot better words than that. But, you know, that that's is brilliant. basically it's, what we're telling that's them. That's gold. I love it. I love it. Uh -huh. um, and you do get nonsense reply. I tell you what, it, what it makes me laugh every time. But it's, you know, when I, when I tell people, to oh, look, say this or do this or, you know, and um, they send it off and they get the reply comes back and they went, oh, you've just seen something on the internet. You know, like, oh, it's a template off the internet. I've dealt with companies, right, from Aberdeen, to uh devon and they say exactly the same thing so they're the ones that are using templates right oh yeah you've just got that off the internet well no actually we've got it off uh, the gdpr regulations which is actually set up there that you have to abide by and also the law of property act 1925 
because all debt has a deed, you see. That's why it comes under the Law of Property Act. A lot of people go, oh, it's not a property. I've just got a bank loan. No, as soon as you do, even a, when you do a credit card and you go buy a round of drinks, right? 20 quid's round of drinks at the bar, right? That creates a deed. So every debt has a deed. And because it's a deed, it goes under the Law of Property Act. And anything that gets, um, if they did sell a debt, which they used to sell them, right? But it takes too long because they have to have a deed of assignment and a deed of novation. So they have to create these deeds, then they have to send them to the um, the one who's buying it, who has to sign the contract and agree it, then send it back to the original bank, say, for instance, who also has signed it and agreed it, then send it to you by registered post, and you have to sign it and agree it. And none of that's ever going to happen, all right? So they just close it down and sell the data. And then, so, you know, so the deed is distinguished, extinguished. Yeah, extinguished. All right, so they've extinguished the deed, really. Okay, and then they just sell your data, and that's what they always try and fight you. Then say, "Oh no, I'm I'm just the agent, and it's up to us to." No, so show me the contract, show me the proof of uh, the debt, right? And even so, show me the, the original contract that I signed, right, to actually create the debt. Show me that, and I'll I'll, I'll pay you the money. Well, you know, and they come back. Honestly, I've seen I've seen them that. They're, they're horrible, right? They've, I've seen them sent, like, literally, like, uh, and they do it by, uh, some of them even do it by post, and they've got a big pile like that of bank statements or payment statements. What on earth does that mean? What of proof is that? Proof that you've been a mug and paid it for 10 years? No. Like, you know, where is the proof that I signed it? Show me it in the wet ink and by a witness and by the original creditor, three signatures, and I'll pay you the money. And they never can. Have you ever tried... Because this is uh, time consuming, energy sucking, and we know that they're fraudulent. Have you ever tried to actually bill them for your time in responding to them? Always, always. And, um, you know, what, what we do is, uh, and this is, this is what really, you know, and they always like, get really arrogant and, you know, we will defend any claim. So I'll tell you what we do. This is this you can do with the um, the bill, the kind of say council tax bill as well. All right, we tell them on the first one, right? Look, you've got and you have to under the GDPR regulations, you've got to give them thirty days to reply. So you say, look, you've got thirty days to reply with answering every question, and they must answer under GDPR regulations every question. Um, now, and they never do because they can't because then they would be admitting the fraud. So they, they come up with guff. You know, they're either going to ignore you or, or come up with a load of nonsense. And so then straight away, we give them, send them a second notice. And we say, you haven't answered any of the questions correctly or fully with when you've got to do it with um, full disclosure. OK, so they're not allowed to half answer, you know, and that's they never answer anything. So then you send them that and say, we're going to, and now there's different um, officers from different parts of the, the world, but in England or the UK, you've got the information commissioner's office, information being data, yeah? So they are in charge of GDPR. So what we do is we say, we are going to make a complaint to the ICO. So, you know, if you don't answer this within seven days, this is the second notice that we're giving them now, um, because they've sent your guff back. We are going to uh, put a complaint in to the ICO. And we also, I always put the word, we may file an N208. This is in the United Kingdom, an N208, which is a claim against them, right, under Article 82 on the GDPR, which is you can um, claim up to three times what they're asking for because of the distress that they've caused you um, by writing to you without a contract or, or, or without legally being under any GDPR regulations. So that's what we write to them. So we tell them that we are going to be charging them then. Now, that is a, a lot of them do just literally back off then. And the, the nonsense they tell you is we've returned the debt to the original creditor. <laughs> you know, as a, today I've actually just had a, I've been talking to a woman and three of the debts that she had and the, the ball said the same thing. We've returned it which means we know we're not going to get anything from you. So we've thrown it away, you know? Um, and remember when it goes, if it did ever go back to the original creditor, then um, it's already closed because it closed the account. 
a lot of times you've actually got the letter that told them they closed it. You know, so never ever throw the letters away. I know people get angry and scrumple them up. Keep everything, you know, and then it's great to go back. But we put we put um, a fee schedule in all the time and tell them we're going to charge you every time I have to write back to you. I'm charging you 150 pound. A lot of them, these solicitors, you know, you get these solicitors letters as well coming in, and we tell them like, look, you're a third party interloper, th- like cease and desist, or I'm going to charge 150 pound for every letter I have to open from you. And, and I've had them from all over the country and, and they stop, they do stop. And I write to their name as well. I put like, say for instance, you know, um, Joe Smith, all right? Look, Joe Smith in your private capacity, who sometimes acts as solicitor Joe Smith in capitals, I'm billing you as a man in the private capacity. I've had letters coming back from solicitors and they've took all their names off, trying to hide their names. You know, and I put, I don't know, I write back and say, look, you know, you've replied to me again. So now you owe me 300 pounds. So, you know, I don't care if you took your name off. I'm saying it to you, Joe Smith, in your private capacity, because they understand what that means. They understand that that's really the law and that they can be held accountable in their private capacity. And that's what they think, oh, sod it and leave it to get out of it. You know, you've just got to get these little bits of knowledge and you can okay. you can like and deal ha- with them. has there ever been a situation where somebody that you know of that has actually got money for uh, the inconvenience and yeah there's, there's like you know there's a i've, I've never uh, had to actually push it that far because they've all they've all ran away very quickly but you know i know of other uh, people that have uh, actually done it and claimed and got money you know some of them have actually done it and took a couple of years to get there um, and it's been well worth it. But unfortunately, these debt collectors and bailiffs and stuff like that, they, they use these um, uh, fines or whatever compensation payments as, as, as a business expense because they know what they're looking for is the low-hanging fruit. So when they go on that internet, like them eBay-type sites, and they buy a million pounds worth of debt for like, you know, 10, 20,000, and they send out these hideous letters and they go, big red, you owe money. You know, a lot of people panic and, and they either pay or pay a portion or, or go on a payment scheme, you know, uh, low hanging fruit. That's what they call it. And, and they get a, they get everything back and a ton more very, very quickly. You know, so like, and, and now and again, when they have to do a little bit of a fine, it's to them, it's a business expense. It's like, you know, a, a, a career criminal gets a few years in prison. He just, well, I, I, I owe it. You know, I'll take it as a, a business kind of expense and get on with it and get out again, start making some more money. You know, unfortunately, that's their attitude. But And you, you mentioned there that um, sometimes the solicitors, they remove their name because I know that happens a lot as well. That's actually illegal as well because there's no name. So it's not you can't actually take it at face value because they haven't yeah. signed it. You know, and the thing is as well, which is like, uh, let's move on because that, that was talking about like a debt, right? A bank loan or a credit card or something like that. But a lot of people, <laughs> and they're all landing now, the council tax bills, right? Now, that is the biggest fraud in the whole planet there. Now, I'm not talking about just the fact that they shouldn't even be charging this tax, right? But when these people don't pay and the people that are struggling and, and, and for that, you know, I mean, like you, you must have seen yourself like over the last couple of years, the suicide rates have just flown through the roof. And it's not just about getting locked down and everything. It's about the debt and the and, and like the, the misery that it's created. And these people are now living in fear and depression because of like in their eyes and they've got debt and, you know, and a lot of it is these bills like. Uh, what are they doing now and blaming bloody Russia and Ukraine? It's like, oh, they've, they've increased everyone's electricity and gas prices and all this nonsense. You know what I mean? What on it? But they'd have increased it before anything happened. Now they're blaming Putin. I, I went it's in like, it's like if the petrol is coming from Russia all over the world because it's between 50 and 100% increase in every yeah. country. It's like, yeah. oh, 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 the oil came from... Oh, what about all these countries that the Americans invaded and took their oil? What happened with that? Why? Yeah. Exactly. But what happened with North Sea gas and North Sea oil and still there, you know, all them oil rigs and all over the place, you know, what, well, what's happened to all that then? You know, like as if, like as if we didn't know. But um, oh, I, I, I don't want to go off on it, but uh, come back and talk about oil and, and about fossil fuels in a second. Got to do that because that's that's a good one. But um, 
on, on that, on about the actual bill side. So if, say, for instance, right, that uh, you, you don't pay um, your, your uh, council tax, right, or your property taxes or whatever taxes that I is, and then they send you a summons, right, completely, utterly, utterly fraudulent. Uh, now, th this is coming into the, the, the Administration of Justices Act, I'm talking about the UK here, like um, uh, 1911, I think it is, right? No one is allowed to act as a court unless it is the court themselves. It is like against that act there to, to actually use the word court or to actually um, put a stamp on. And these councils do it all the time. Um, now, I know I've actually got uh, like firsthand knowledge of, of people that have literally, and I've been talking to them this year, but, and I've said, there won't be a court there. He went, oh, I'm going in. So you've went to court and there's no court. And it actually states there, there, there won't be a hearing. Well, that's against Human Rights Act because in the Human Rights Act, you know, everyone is allowed to have a fair hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. And they don't have hearings because they're literally hiring office, the councils, near the court or in the court building. Then they hire a solicitor who's not a barrister or some, as, um, sorry, not, not, not a magistrate or sometimes they hire their own magistrate and they just go and stamp all of these uh, summonses and then what they, and they pass out these um uh, liability orders to call them right so you haven't been able to pay your, your council tax and then the numbers that they have on the court number or ring the court number it's not the court number it's the council again that's fraud and when you ring them they just say oh look let, let's make a payment schedule then so it's just all about wanting the money all right so then the, the, what they do is they give these liability orders out, which are completely fake, that no one will sign because that would be putting their name to fraud. And then they pass it to these scumbag like uh, bailiffs again, right? And they come out with these fake warrants and they come out with it's a complete and utter fake warrant. They will not sign it. No one will because that will end, end up getting put in prison. So they're not going to do it. So if that ever happens... Right. And some scumbag idiot like bailiff turns up at your door and they say, oh, and they, oh, we've got it on a tablet. Oh, look at me tablet. There's a warrant. Look, it says court warrant. Get the name of the court. Right. The name of the court they say it's from. Don't ring the number that they've got written on there or any number that they give you. Telephone number. Find out what they say for an ad. Where do well, Newcastle County Court, for instance. Right. So it's all right. Newcastle County Court. Get online and find out the real court number and ring them with the reference number they're stating and say, was there a hearing? And they'll tell you no. Right. Well, I need to, somebody's just, don't tell them it's about council tax. Don't tell them it's about uh, electricity fine bill or whatever, you know, just say, look, oh, just, you know, someone said to me that I have a court order or I have a court summons or have an, in, whatever, a warrant uh, uh, under this reference. Is that right? And they'll t uh, have it on loudspeaker as well. So they can hear, because they'll tell you it's not, oh, no, it's nothing to do with us. Never heard of it. No reference number, no case file, nothing. It's a fraudulent warrant. It's a fraudulent summons. It's, everything is fraud. Especially if you, because what they'll do then is say, oh, I need it. I'm going to ring the police to help. Well, it's, a, it's a civil matter, right? I haven't committed a crime. Right? I've never hurt anyone, never murdered anyone. I haven't like, robbed anyone. So what, what's the police going to do? Now, and, and unfortunately, I've, people panic. Um, and, you know, they get scared and they say and do you know, silly things. First of all, you don't have to let them into your house at all. You never let them in. Don't let them step foot in it. And they're not allowed to break anything. Um, so like to, to like break in the door or anything like that. And if the police do come uh, and just say, well, look, he's got a fake warrant. I'll, I'll ring the court again, if you like, and do it again. Right. And, and if the police, the clowns in costumes, I like to call them, if they say anything like, well, look, it's a warrant. I can see it. It states there it's a warrant. And they're, and they're going to be adamant on it just to ask them, look, are you legally trained and do you have a license for a lawyer, a solicitor or a judge? Now, they're obviously haven't. Right. And they'll not answer you because, you know, don't say, oh, look, you know, are you under your oath? And this is common law. Who cares? Right. Right. Just stick to the basics. Look, what are you licensed then? Are you licensed to uh, be a solicitor or a judge? No, well, I tell you what, then your opinion is completely unwarranted and unwanted. So be quiet. If you're here to stop a breach of the priest, make sure that he doesn't do any damage to my property then. And that's all you're here for. And I'm being polite. I'm not being rude. And that's it, right? So like any clown in a costume comes, oh yeah, he's got a warrant. 
Well, they haven't got a warrant. And if you're saying it's a warrant, it's just your opinion. And you're not licensed to be legally uh, given advice. Are you giving legal advice? Ask them that, right? Because there's a fine for you if they're going to tell you they're giving legal advice. Uh, and that's it. And close them idiots for the bailiffs down because they haven't got a warrant. They haven't got a, a judgment or any orders or anything like that. No court orders, no liability orders, nothing. Right. Just that little bit of knowledge. Right. And, and like ring up the court number itself. Don't do any numbers they tell you apart from the reference number they're saying they've got, because that would be your uh, council tax number. And I've actually heard of that. And I've heard that's going on in Ireland as well. So I'm assuming it's happening in the, all over the world. Excuse me. Are you aware of anybody that has actually taken legal action against them? Because that is highly fraudulent to fake, yeah. uh, you know, a, a court order. Yeah, um, I was. Well, there was a guy. He was not far from me, actually. I can't remember his name now. And he was from Darlington, which is like about like an hour's drive down south. And he actually went into the police station with all the evidence and they would not listen to him. Because they're all in it, you know, they're, exactly. they're all part of it, like yeah. the councils, the councillors, you know, and I think that was about 2016, something like that. It's about six years ago. And he went in with, look, you know, this is the fraudulent um, under the under the Fraud Act 2006 you know, and, and under the um, Justice Act 2011, uh, 1911. You're not allowed to say you're a court. You're not allowed to use their stamps. And, and there's no court. And it was in the building next door. Look, they've hired this building. Well, no, it's, there was a police inspector and he wouldn't allow them to film. And he was saying, um, well, you know, you said you have to come in here. I'm not going to discuss it out here. And there was a guy with a camera. And it was funny because he said, are you legally trained um, to this guy holding the camera? And he should have just said, look, I, I'm a paralegal. You know, I am a qualified paralegal. And anyone that can actually discuss law is a qualified paralegal, by the way. So, um, but yeah, and they'll not know that because they're just idiots, you know. Uh, and this inspector, he said, I'm not going to discuss it. You've got to come in private. You know, and then there was a PC there. And he goes, oh, I'll, I'll film it on my camera. Oh, yeah, OK, I'll believe you. Yeah, I trust you, you know, but uh, they wouldn't discuss it on camera. And he went, well, it's a very complicated issue. You know, we can't just say things like fraud. Well, why? They've just said the record, right? It's like, you know, they've actually got the, and the summons, which was signed, it was signed by someone who'd not worked for them. It was a photocopied signature, right? But for two and a half years, he hadn't worked there, this guy, apparently. And But now they'll not put any signatures on anything or names on any of it. So it all just comes out like, you know, who was that? It's an anonymous, <laughs> you know, these anonymous summonses and anonymous court orders and anonymous judgments. It's just nonsense. But yeah, you know, the um, and there was a guy called um, Alistair Zida, okay. So and, and he's got a book out called "Ditch Your Council Tax," um, and it's so Alistair Zida. Look for that one or ditch your council tax. Pretty sure that's it, and it's on Amazon. So go check it out, and that'll help you if you've got problems with your council tax or anything. And he tells you a lot of the the, the acts and the purge react and all of that stuff. And he stood up against them. So he went in and he said, look, if you do get the chance to go in, and I told the lady this as well, not long ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, and sometimes they'll have a hearing, you see, right? So they'll have a hearing, but it's just sitting in. She actually got into the court and says, well, ask for their names and ask for their oath. Um, and, and they wouldn't tell her, you know? So, like, so there was three magistrates. One of them gave their a name and the others ran away, you know? So, uh, so she's got like a postponement to go back. I mean, she's actually got good reason why she didn't pay because she actually got flooded out by sewerage. So she actually like had to clean up not only up her own garden and yard, but also the street outside because it was full of sewerage because the council wouldn't fix it. So she wouldn't pay. And she paid for privately to have it all done then deducted it off her council tax. I'm not saying any names or where they're from or anything, but then... Right. And then they still build her for it. And then they took her to court for not paying a council tax. You know what I mean? So sewerage everywhere. Um, but yeah, this just they don't take responsibility for every, anything. Right. Uh, um, and, but Alistair Zidder, he, he actually went to the court as well. And um, this they walked out. The, the magistrates will walk out. And then once, you know, because they can't d deal with you when you're actually stating the law. Well, what about the Fraud Act 2006? You know, and they just walk off. And then when it, you've gone, then they stamp your liability order anyway. 
again fraud and it continues but there's nobody can actually come in because they'll never ever have if they come in with a warrant right or or uh, any kind of judgment it must be signed wet ink signature from either a justice of the peace or a real judge and if they haven't got it it's fraud and there's nothing they can do they can send them all day and you can always bat them down because they, they, they've got no lawful standing or even legal standing uh, with, with my case I I had to go back about eight times and I created an affidavit so basically I didn't even know what an affidavit was to be honest I had to go to these guys that told me I didn't know what it was I was I was never in court prior to that I mean it's like you know what's going on here but I responded to their claim I mean it was all lies what they had said and I'd some, I know it was a 43 or 45 points their barrister could never respond to any of them. One of them was the signatures. I had something like over 20 signatures from all different names, the exact same signature, and even from two banks because the bank had bought out one other bank during the time of the thing. And like that in itself should have thrown it out the door. And I lost. Mm. I lost the case. And basically, I was going to appeal. And uh, Basically, what happened is they sold one of the properties a lot less than an offer I had, and they were coming after me for the excess and I wanted to appeal. And in Ireland, it was a case of when you appeal, it opens up the whole lot again, plus interest. So I won on the interest and I won on the, the legal fees because I said, hey, I've been trying to resolve this for a few years. And he says, OK, but I like I 100 percent the judge was corrupt, but I actually won. And that's so it was a case of something like 68,000 versus if it opened up it again to half a million. And, and that was the high court. And then I said. I wasn't going to take that risk because I mean, at the end of the day, you're 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 fighting in corruption, so it's like their money. That's the way they see it. So then I was checking about going to the European Union. I've said I I go to the the legal system there, and I was like, you the only way you can do that is if you actually appeal and go through the system. And I heard as well with the European Union, there's something like only five percent or something like that of the cases that they accept. So. And I know the EU is corrupt as well. So just for those that are kind of listening in, you don't understand how deep and corrupt this is unless you've actually gone through it. And when you go through it, you have conversations with people and you realize so many people have done it. And you know, once you get, like you've given a load of brilliant tips today, like the GDPR, that is a brilliant one. Like, so... I know we're like because we're 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 around the one and a half hour, and I don't want to go on. Even though I know I could talk to you for three hours, but I'm I'm just conscious of a sweet spot for people that listening as well. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. I would love to get you back, Peter. So uh, you might let people know how they can get in contact because I know you've got a very good uh, YouTube channel as well. But the best way to to get in contact with you. Yeah, well, I mean, if you go on the, the YouTube channel, 2021 Return to Democracy, I missed the year, but never mind. <laughs> you know, um, or we have the Facebook uh, group as well, but I actually can't remember what it's called. Uh, so sure what you can do for me anyway is you can send me the different links and I'll include it in both yeah. the audio and the video so people will be able uh, to find it. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you my uh, link tree thing, you know, just the one link and it's got them all on there. But, you know, we run the site um, www.claimyourstrawman.com and also uh, smashadet.com as well. Um, I'm just upgrading the smashadet.com one so it's got more information on but a lot of the information that I've been talking about but very very specific obviously I've got loads of videos to training videos on there that will teach you what to do and what to say and what to write and all of the acts and statutes and, and, and the GDPR and the DPA and you know once you start getting into their side of it and using it against them you know against using their their, let's call them laws, okay? Their laws against these debt collectors and that. I mean, it smashes them to pieces. That's why I call it smashadebt.com. It's just, and, and it's enjoyable, you know? And once you've actually got these little wins, you know, like the people themselves and they've gone out and they've smashed these debts, it's, you know, and you realize that these people will, will, will lie to your face. They'll just look at you and lie. Um, you know, they do not, they've got no soul, right? Um, but once you've actually exposed them for what they are and they know they can't go any further, they will just run away. So have a look at have, have a look at those anyway, but I will send you the links over. I'm 
terrible for remembering names. No, but I, 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 I have the link tree one in you because I know in your website you've actually in the description it's there. So I'll, I'll make sure I put the link tree so that'll have everything where people sure. can get in contact with you. So yeah, listen, but I'd love to come back. Oh, that, definitely, you know, the yeah, thing. yeah. We could talk, talk for for hours and hours, you know. Yeah, no, definitely, because uh, and what I'm finding is because I've had a few different uh, like Peter Stone and a few other. It's the one that people are coming constantly. And I know that there's so many, they're kind of crying for help as well. And yeah. that's why I want to do this as much as possible, especially because we've both been on our knees. And mm-hmm. it, like, because I know there's ways as well, people. And I, I know you've got a membership thing, which you give a lot of the documentation to, which is, I, I feel is very, because, you, you know, we have to kind of earn as well for the amount of time because you can't be a charity gay. But at the same time, there's both angles, you know, so that it's like the podcast, you know, for all the different podcasts I do, they're all free. People can learn, but there's also ways that they can contact you and let you do it, which makes it a lot easier because there's, a, I know there's a lot of people as well that actually can afford to get this done, but to get them to go away. So I know you offer that service and, you know, I mean, I think just by listening, they'll realize that they're, you know, dealing with somebody who knows what they're doing, which is brilliant to, to see. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. No, brilliant. So that's all for the Awakening Podcast. Uh, you find all our episodes on awakeningpodcast.org. As mentioned, we're also on BitChute as Awakening Podcast. Sure to give us a thumbs up, five-star rating, share with your friends, especially this one, because you might know it, but I know there's a high percentage of people that are in debt and they could do with this information. Until next week, take care.